Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, it is such an honor to be here and to speak here. And I have to say, um, it's just touched my heart. Every All the little intricate things that you do at this church is so touching. And I had to cheer up when the little children came up. <laughs> but I love the singing and the and the different voices. It's just awesome. It's just it's a treat to be here. Um, and thank you for the introduction. Uh, that was part of my um, part of what I was going to speak on was my introduction. But I'm going to skip that part since they didn't introduce me. That's good. That's perfect. So, and it's great to be a part of Women's History Month. Um, there's a lot of history with women, and um, I'm so thankful that we are um, enjoying that and and speaking about it. So I do have a message to share. Oh, that just changed. <laughs> I have a message to share, but um, first of all, I do want to share a little bit more about my testimony. Um, as Pastor JB spoke, I, I did speak of some of it in the Heart to Heart um, Valentine uh, group, but I want to share just a little bit more. Uh, so I, like a lot of people, um, have been a broken vessel in my life, and um, I've known the Lord since I was a little girl. I came to know Jesus when I was five, and I do remember that day. Um, and sometimes, though, we know something in our spirit, but the world teaches us other things. And so as a as a little girl, you know, I grew up in a broken home. Um, my father, who I adored, left us when we were when I was very young. And so my mother remarried after that. And my stepfather, um, I was very afraid of my my father was just the fun loving father. That was just great. And then my stepfather came in and as he, he was a good man to take on myself and my three sisters. I um, mean, he had a daughter of his own. Um, he was just, you know, a presence that I didn't know. And so there was a lot of fear there and not even necessarily his fault, but just I didn't know him. And so that, you know, changes the course of a person's life. And after that, um, you know, I pretty much left home as soon as I possibly could. <laughs> just I never really felt home. You know, I was just always just, and I never really realized that until like older, got older, but I never really felt like I had a home. So I left and and I ended up in some very abusive, very abusive relationships. And one in particular um, was life-threatening. Uh, he could have killed me easily. I did manage to survive that and and move on from that. And so um, that's really good. But I, I also at the time was drinking a lot to soothe that. I didn't know how because of the broken family. I wasn't ever taught how to cope with life. And so I started drinking a lot and that became my comfort and the only way that I knew how to deal with things. So I drank. And um, so my children, I have two children, my son, Josh, and my daughter, Whitney. And so they, they grew up, this is like the cycle, right? They grew up in this and, and they, you know, they suffered a lot as a result. Um, but God is faithful. So about four years ago, um, and I always knew that I would, I finally came to that place that I knew I would come to, and that was to finally go all in with Christ. There was the calling on my life. I, I've known it my whole life. And I finally, you know, I remember at work and just putting a sticky note on my desk and it was saying, this is coming, this is coming. And when it does, these are the things I was going to do. I knew finally I went all in. God changed my life completely as I seeked out his word and his will. I am now in an ordained marriage with my husband, Brandon, and my relationship with my children is completely repaired. And I'm so thankful to, to say that um, God is just, he's healed us so much and I'm set free from alcohol. I do want to say that my daughter, um, Whitney, she probably since the time she learned how to pray, she had been praying for me to be free from alcohol. And I'm sorry, it's a little bit emotional subject. It still hits my heart. Whitney never gave up praying for me. And to this day, she will tell you that I'm her one true miracle to see her mother set free from alcohol. So I encourage you all, that person, and this has been four, like four years ago that I, I did this, that person that you have in your life that is the one that you think is hopeless or you, you've prayed and you prayed and you give up and then you go back and pray some more, don't ever give up. Faith is a breeding ground for miracles. It truly is. It truly is. So on top of all that, I am now an ordained minister. I'm licensed and ordained. And that is just, it's just a testament to what God can do. So, and, it, and by the way, uh, speaking is, is new to me. Um, so forgive me for just my, I'm just not a professional speaker yet. <laughs> I hope to be. <laughs> 
So, but what I wanted to uh, speak on today was, um, I lost my little note when I was speaking there, right? It's had to happen. I want to, I want to talk about, um, our purpose in life. And um, that sounds just like, you know, we hear things like our purpose in life. What is it? But have you ever been in your life or you're just wondering like one day, like, why am I even here? You know, I go through life and I'm like, I'm, I, when I was younger, I thought, you know, I would do something really great, you know, and, and I want to, you know, make a lot of money or, you know, uh, start a charity or something or just do something really good. And then I'm like, here I am and I've not done anything. And I finally have just kind of, well, decided I'm just going to be here. Right. And so our purpose in life or the reason of our existence. So I have been wondering about that. And, and so seeking this out, what I found out was in short, our purpose in life is to glorify God. Amen. <laughs> so that is so amazing. And so we think about that. We are here to put God on display. We are here to make him look magnificent. We are here to mimic him in our words, in our being, in our actions, right? So we as humans, though, is especially important that we do is because we are made in God's image. And we also, I thought this was so cool when I, when I recognized this, the fact that we have free will, we choose to do it. So how great is it that we glorify God by choice? It is so amazing. So in, in Genesis uh, 127, um, it does, it says, so God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God. He created them both male and female. And then, so that means we're equally, just as uh, Pastor JB said, you know, men and women alike. So Isaiah 43, 7, it tells us that we were made for this purpose. This is where it says, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. So this is so simple, but we often miss it. We miss it. We are in his image. We are also his temple. We know this. We are his temple. We are his dwelling place. So we walk around and he's walking around. There's people I've met that I knew just were so close to the Lord. I literally, she walked by me. I felt the presence of God go by. That's what I want to be in my life. I want to glorify God. But we were made, we were redeemed, and we were bought for his glory. We are not even our own. I want to say to the definition of glory, just to put this more in perspective, we, we hear it, we know what it is, but let's put it more in perspective. In Webster Dictionary, it says to praise, to magnify, and honor, and worship, and to credit honor to in our thoughts, and our words, and our actions. So God is glorified. His ways are seen and admired in us and recognized as his actual work. So in contrast, God's will for us is to glorify him. Man's will for himself is to magnify himself, right? We see this. And so in Genesis 11, 4, um, the Tower of Babel is what we're speaking on. So the people said, come on, let's build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. So I thought about this. And yes, it's in contrast to God's will is man to glorify himself. But I'm thinking about this. and I'm thinking how comical it truly is. That the very thing that the man was going to use to magnify himself, he was building toward heaven, God's dwelling place. He was also using the very thing that God created, bricks and, and tar, to build this tower. So it's really funny that we, we do that. We was like so blinded, I think. It's so funny. Everything that we use today, everything that man glorifies himself in. Um, is God's creation. No man can actually make anything out of thin air that God did. And most importantly, no man can give life to anything. And so the next question that I came to with this realization is, how do we glorify God? So the word of God says to bear his fruit. So in John 15, 5 and 15, 8, it says, I am divine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear fruit. You will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. In verse eight, it says, this is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Again, this scripture, I think sometimes we hear it so many times that we really don't stop and think about it. But if you look at a tree and you see the branch and you see the branches that are that are blooming, you know, the, the leaves, that's us being, a, you know, abiding in the vine. Then you look in the ground and you see the stick down there that has no branches and is dead. That's us not abiding in God. We do not abide in God. Our spiritual man dies. It starts to die. So I wanted to um, encourage all of us 
and um, extend our thoughts on where we are already glorifying God. I want us to look and see what we're already doing. I thought this would be encouraging to us to see that we already are living our destiny and what God planned for our lives. And so we're going to start with fruits of the spirits. Um, I just want to go through each of them and just do some examples. And the first one we're going to start with is love. And the word of God in John 13, 34, it speaks of mimicking God's ways. And it says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. So when we pray for one another, when we help them in their needs, when we visit them in the hospital, when they lose a loved one, we visit them. We help the elderly when they need a ride to the doctor or we help them around the house, cooking for others in needs. There's people that are really good at cooking. These are things that we do. And this glorifies God. We're living our purpose. And the next fruit of the spirit listed is joy. So praising and worshiping God. So this right here, we were just doing this in all the different languages and praising and worshiping God. Every one of you were glorifying God and living your purpose. So Philippians 4.4 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. So in joy, this is interesting, I found. Um, what about repentance? Yes, this is really cool. So Luke 15. 10, we're trying to see how joy and repentance ties together. So Luke 15, 10 says, just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Every time we repent, we're glorifying God. Isn't that amazing? I love it. The next fruit of the spirit that I was speaking on is patience. So I want to do definition of patience also. Again, a word that we hear often, but let's define it. Patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Sounds easy. <laughs> so also, if patience is a fruit of the spirit, then it is a God-given restraint from losing our cool under stressful situations. So God gives us this patience. It's from him. So we have it. God gives us patience. We already have it. We're walking around with it. So examples of showing patience is restraint to retaliate in aggravating situations like traffic or someone talking to us in a wrongful manner, accusations, people coming at us and we restrain to retaliate patience. Patience is, so Santa was talking about waiting on the Lord for clarity in the situation. Should we go to Oklahoma? Should we stay here when these situations? So waiting on the Lord for clarity or directions in our lives. What about waiting on healing in our bodies? <laughs> this one's a double whammy, I think, because we're waiting on the healing, but it's also very emotional. So it takes a lot of patience to have faith in God and, and believe that. So that glorifies God when we wait upon the Lord. The next fruit of the Spirit with the examples is kindness. In Jeremiah um, 9.24, it says, I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For in these things, I delight, declares the Lord. So an example of being, being of kindness is just being friendly. I think, I think when I moved to Dallas, I, there was, there, I recognized a big difference between friendliness in the city versus the small town I grew up in, just going to the grocery store. <laughs> so yes, of course, that example of being a friendly is, you know, coming into a room of people you don't know. And that, there's that one person who did come over and greet you. That's that kindness glorifying God. It's amazing. It's, it's, it is such a relief. It's such a relief. And I think sometimes we catch ourselves being the one who doesn't do that, but we're so grateful when that one person does extend the kindness to us. They make you feel welcome. And then also just speaking in kindness to one another. We all have bad days. And some days we, again, with the restraint, you know, we, we speak in kindness, even though we're tired and aggravated, or even to our children. Sometimes I know we've all probably been guilty of that, or even to our pets. It gets me in trouble sometimes. <laughs> I have that one cat that meows all the time. <laughs> Her name's Honey. <laughs> Most of us can work on this, and, and we know it. The next fruit of the Spirit on the list is generosity. And so in Hebrews 13, 16 says, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. For such sacrifices are pleasing to God, glorifies God. I found something that said the three T's of generosity is time, 
talent, and treasure. And uh, someone told me once um, that the best generosity I ever showed her was giving her my time. She was going through a very tough situation and she just needed to talk and vent. And I listened to her. I will tell you, it was very difficult. I said a lot to do that day. But then she circled around and told me that. And it was just like, oh, <laughs> thank you, Lord. Though I did, I did choose to do it, even though, you know, we're human. <laughs> Another example of being generous in talent, I want to point out, was is Sandra, a black bear. I wanted to say that, R- Ramirez. <laughs> So she she helped me with my bio that that Jean read, and that was very beneficial to me. She's very talented in that area. We don't recognize it, that she was generous with her talent. And it was something that it would have taken me a long time to write. And she just whipped it out. Well, I don't know if she whipped it out, but she did it. And it meant so much to me. And, and it's on my website now. So I'm very thankful for that. And then, of course, our treasure. I'm helping others when we can financially. And, of course, so supporting our church and our pastor and our missions. So the next one is faithfulness, and uh, faithfulness comes from a place of trust and loyalty. Think about that. Um, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is a confidence in what we hope for, an assurance of what we do not see. Faithfulness is, think, this just came to my heart, or my mind is, is like being married and being faithful to Brandon, even though something's dogging on me that day, thinking that he's doing this or he's doing that. You know what I mean? We, we do that. That's human. But I'm still going to be faithful. <laughs> so as a Christian, um, being faithful to God or to our spouse or to a job that brings glory to him. And even in a job, sometimes we go through situations where you know, our manager's not being kind, or we have a we have that one coworker that's really causing us problems, and we still continue to be faithful in that job regardless. This brings glory to God. It's who we are as a person. And also doing what we say we will do, even if we don't feel like it that day. So there's things sometimes we'll tell people, yeah, I'll do that, I'll do that. And then we don't want to, and sometimes we don't do it, but we need to be faithful because it glorifies God. The next one is um, the next fruit of the spirit is gentleness. And um, the definition of gentleness is the quality of being kind, tender or mild mannered. And we spoke about the kindness. This is a little bit different as in when we're speaking, we are gentle. It's a strength. This is a strength. It is connecting in love or helping others and loving others, even when they have done us wrong. Being gentle with our biological children or someone who you are teaching something new. Again, this kind of ties into kindness, but it is separate. So uh, Jesus was a gentle shepherd. He gently nudges us when we start to stray. And lastly, self-control. So when we exercise self-control over our bodies, our spiritual life, and what we allow ourselves to put into our minds, it glorifies God. We mind what we watch on TV mind that we are going to read the word, set some time aside. We have that time. When we do that, we glorify God. It builds our spirit up. We want to be that person walking through the room that people feel because they have spent that time in the word of God and and spoke with him and spent time with him. Also on self-control, I read this. So 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. There is nothing nobody can say. Well, you just don't understand. Well, somebody does. We've been through it. Jesus has walked through it. And then God is faithful. So he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you're tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can endure it. So not only does he give us what he does, only gives us what we can bear. No more, but he also gives us a way of escape. So he gives us twofold on that one. Recognize that. We need to recognize that as a child of God that abides in the vine, we will eventually be able to produce all of these fruits in abundance, right? If we continue to abide in the vine, read his word, spend time with him, it'll come naturally. The fruit will grow. You know, as we're growing up, we're gonna have we're gonna have fruit that's not good, but God is is working on us for certain. Um the last thing I wanted to share was, it's just true that because we were designed for this purpose to glorify God, that if we're not abiding in the vine, we will never truly be happy. We will always be seeking whatever in the world versus God. You're just never going to arrive until you finally just lay down your life and just trust the Lord with it. We're not going to be, 
you know, fixed overnight or whatever. We need to quit beating ourselves up for the things in our lives that, that, you know, the little things or even the big things too. We take all those things. Jesus died for our sins. If we didn't have sin in our life, we wouldn't need, we, Jesus wouldn't have needed to come to the earth and die for us. Recognize that. Just accept who you are and move forward and give it to the Lord. It, it sounds so easy, but truly, you know, sometimes we have to pray like the alcohol. I literally had to come to a place that I said, Lord God, I don't want to quit. Please help me want to want to quit. I could see the destruction it was doing to my family. I couldn't put it down. But then once I finally did that, and it didn't happen the next day, but God was on the scene. He truly was. So I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful I'm here today and and, 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 you know, speaking this message. I hope you enjoyed it. And I just just praise the Lord for this church. It's really, it's really a blessing to me. So thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Minister Wynn. Spendin', amen. Let the church say amen. Let us say amen again. We have heard a word from the Lord. Amen. And we appreciate uh, your expression of who God is through you. You are the instrument of which God has spoken to us today, and we hope to ripen that fruit of the Spirit with your help. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'd like to open up the doors of the church because we have heard the Word of God. For those who want to join our organization, we call Dallas Indian Mission, which is Church Ecclesia. If you want to join us in the vineyard as workers who are trying to bear that fruit, Please do so at this time as we stand and we will be singing all to Jesus, I surrender. Amen. Amen.
Thank you so much. Amen.